people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. We'll start with this. The latest as it pertains to the upcoming Sky Nicholson versus Raven Chapman fight, Sky Nicholson says, new levels unlocked as we approach the 12th outing. Sky will be attempting to go 12-0 as the defending WBC featherweight champion against another unbeaten fighter like herself in Raven Chapman. In previous instances that I've talked about this fight, I've talked about how stylistically Raven actually has the right style for this assignment. She's not as talked about. She's not as well known as Sky Nicholson. But she will be if she wins. Raven Chapman, who said three weeks to go until me and my team make history in Saudi. As I step into the ring to fight the World Boxing Council's featherweight champion in the opening of Riyadh season, the promotional period starts this week, and I cannot wait to get started. So Raven's not a big trash talker, you know? She seems like a nice lady. I don't expect things to get volatile between Raven and Sky in the buildup. I don't expect things to get volatile or hostile. There's not much animosity or rancor between them. If it were Sky and Tiara Brown, I could see, but Sky and Raven, they're gonna keep it cordial, I think. They're gonna keep it professional. It's in the ring where the sparks are gonna fly, as Raven Chapman will have Sky Nicholson under a lot of pressure, I think. And edging this fight, I decided to go with Raven Chapman on the premise that she's got fast enough hands and fast enough feet to keep up with and keep on Sky Nicholson while throwing combinations. Faster than anybody Sky has fought so far, more capable. With a smidge more power and a lot more mean streak than anybody that Sky has fought so far. And that might be hard to imagine for some that Matchroom's golden girl in the featherweight division might get her goose cooked when the time comes. But don't forget, Anthony Joshua just lost this past weekend that these Matchroom versus Queensbury fights have been largely won. How many people thought Daniel was gonna blow him out like that? By the Queensbury fighters, whether you're talking about the Matchroom versus Queensbury five versus five, or this past weekend's main event, Queensbury's been kicking Matchroom's ass, and this is another Matchroom versus Queensbury fight. Nicholson versus Chapman. That's an intangible, that all the momentum and all the success has been going to the Queensbury fighters in these situations, and not the Matchroom fighters. And I already like Raven's style, her come forward, aggressive combination punching style over Sky's economic outside fighting that it's gonna be hard at some point to stay on the outside that nobody that Sky has fought so far can bring it like Raven can bring it. So if Sky wins, I would be thoroughly impressed, but I'm not sure she's going to. <laughs> With just one and two punches at a time against an aggressive fighter that wants to throw three and four punches at a time with foot speed of their own, the victory for Raven all hinges on her ability to cut off the ring. That's where the focus has gotta be. So long as you can do that, the fight is won. Where cutting off the ring differs from just following the opponent around in a straight line is in cutting off the ring you move with them in the same direction they're moving and using the corners and making that beeline to meet them where they will be so you can pin them down than just following them around and being walked into straight punches and counters sky wants to fight at a safe distance only throwing one or two punches at a time everything is behind the jab and off the jab where raven will employ her jab a bit differently use it as a key doubling and tripling up on that jab if she's smart to prevent sky from throwing get her to cover up keep her on the defensive doubling and tripling up on the jab as you inch forward inch closer even if sky decides to tie you up as you close the distance even if she decides to clinch she can only do that but so many times before she's deducted a point don't forget that this is not a matchroom show this is a Riyadh season show neither fighter has home field advantage and neither fighter is the house fighter where there might be partial officiating that may not be the case here and sky may not have that to fall back on 
I don't think Raven knocks her out. I don't think she gets her out of there. But I do think she can outwork her. Appear, the busier fighter in the eyes of the judges. That it's Sky consistently with her back on the ropes, moving away as Raven closes in. Sky's a good fighter. I'm not taking that away from her. But I've yet to see any semblance of inside game, infighting, any ability to do work there. And Raven Chapman is a mid range to inside fighter. So you're either going to engage her or you're going to run. She's going to run. Try to keep it long and loose on on the outside and I question whether she can do that the whole fight. I'm going with Raven tenuously. I am going with Raven Chapman to win a points decision. If Sky can prove me wrong, prove me wrong and I would be thoroughly impressed. But I'm going with Raven on points. In men's super lightweight news, a Twitter user that goes by the name Artman said, anybody see this guy, this guy being former IBF champion Subriel Matias, him and his 15 fans, just a couple of months ago, he was considered the biggest boogeyman that would absolutely destroy Devin Haney and the 140 pound division. Now it's silence since he got cooked in his own backyard. To which Devin Haney responded, yeah, him too. Who does this idiot expect to be talking about a fight that isn't being negotiated and no one expects to happen? Make it and watch how fast people will start talking about it again. Make it and watch how many of them favor Subriel to beat Devin. Because unbeknownst to most, the whole time that Subriel was IBF super lightweight champion, he was subject to a 10 pound rehydration cap that Devin Haney wasn't subject to as World Boxing Council champion. Why is that important? Because even with a rehydration cap, Subriel Matias stayed a big puncher, forcing many of his opponents to retire in their corner. Even with a weight cap, Subriel had power, and even without a weight cap, Devin had no power. He still has no none power zero allowed to rehydrate to whatever he wanted to rehydrate to at 135 at 140 devin's got no pop no power are you telling yourself that because liam Pato beat this guy devin haney beats this guy liam Pato has power he knocked out montana love he knocked out jock barbas devin couldn't knock out jorge linares so what do you think that because devin's got a decent jab and he uses a philly shell and he moves around you know where this is going Going because any fighter, any American fighter that has a decent jab and fights out of a shell and moves around, they like in the Mayweather. They think that's the key to all the doors, the answer to all the questions. And it's not. Devin Haney has neither the power to keep Subriel off of him or the inside game to contend with him mid-range to inside. So if you made the fight, I would heavily favor Subriel Matias to beat him. And I'm not talking about two to three to four, five years from now like you cowards like it. I'm talking about if that fight were next. Next or after next. Because that's what they like to do. Wait till the guy's an old man, then go after him in some veiled attempt to say, I told you so. Coward. Make that fight next. Devin doesn't have an opponent lined up. I don't see why they can't make it. You do a lot of business with Matchroom. Subriel still is a Matchroom fighter. Why don't you just put your money where your mouth is and fight him? You'd think people wouldn't watch it. They would. He's Puerto Rican with the island of Puerto Rico behind him. So the fight would have a profile in your Devin Haney. Devin the Dream Haney, who gets into fights with carnies that he can't knock out. But he's supposed to knock this guy out? No, no, no. He's going to outbox him. Outbox him. Like I haven't heard that a million times. A blanket buzzword a lot of casuals like to use when they can't actually break down a fight and tell you how, how exactly a guy wins. They'll tell you he'll outbox him. By doing what? Trying to hang back, stay on the outside, throwing single jabs? Do you think that's going to keep Subriel Matias out? What they tell themselves is some nondescript Australian fighter was able to beat Subriel, so surely Devin the Dream would be able to beat Subriel, not realizing Liam punches harder than Devin. Liam has better inside game than Devin. Frankly, I don't think that Devin would have been able to endure, stand up to the punches that got in. I don't think he would have been able to take the shot that Liam Pato took. I don't. And here's the kicker. Subriel's not champion anymore, so he's not subject to a 10-pound rehydration cap, which means where you get to rehydrate to wherever you want to, this time, 
so would he. And he's strong with a rehydration cap. Without one, he'll be even stronger. He's a prolific puncher, a busy puncher with a rehydration cap. Without one, he'll be even busier and more durable. I suppose it's much ado about nothing because Devin's just talking. That's all he's doing, he's talking. If at any point between his last fight and now, he wanted a fight with Subriel, Subriel's right there. He don't got a dance partner and neither do you. So if you wanted to put your money where your mouth is, you could have, but you're not going to. He's coming off a loss. He's beatable, isn't he? So go beat him. I'll bet you won't. I'll bet you don't. I'll bet this year comes and goes and you don't even sneeze in that guy's direction. That's what I think. Irrespective of what Liam Paro did, you're not Liam Paro. You can't punch and you can barely take a punch even without a rehydration cap. Let this guy get inside on Devin, he'll turn him into a taco. You think Ryan Garcia's left hooks were damaging? Try letting this guy on the inside and see what he does to you. That's why your father lied all those months ago about Subriel pricing himself out that he spoke to Peter Kahn, who has absolutely nothing to do with Subriel Matias, but that's the lie your father told to try to make it seem like Subriel was pricing himself out. Because underneath it all, you guys already know he's all wrong for you. Claiming that he demanded six million dollars according to Peter Kahn, why would you talk to Peter Kahn about Subriel when Peter doesn't manage him? Peter has nothing to do with that team. And the boxing world, at least at that time, let Bill and Devin get away with that bold-faced lie because at least some of them decided they rather root for two liars than Subriel Matias. Tribalism. That shit wouldn't save Devin if they made this fight, but you can count your lucky stars that they're not gonna make this fight, and Devin's just talking. He ain't gonna do shit. The most basic punch in boxing is a jab. You need to know how to defend it. By the second and some, Sorry, someone at that level should be shown how to defend a jab. What they've been doing, they call it film studies, yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyway, don't get me started because, yeah, uh, there's, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, I'm not a bitter man. There's a lot of anger when I hear the bullshit that's been sold to boxers. Yeah? That's lazy coaching. Mm -hmm. That's lazy coaching. It's overrated. Film studies are overrated. You film study us. Okay, we'll change that particular thing you've been studying on us. What are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do? I spend time, practically, on the practicalities. Under these circumstances, Don Charles going in on Ben Davison, critiquing, criticizing his coaching methods. When he does that, it's a victory lap. It's rubbing it in. Behind the guise of concern, behind the guise of outrage. What it really is, is you rubbing it in that perhaps this guy is more praised than you are or was more praised revered because of what the alternative is the alternative is ben davison trains the fighter properly ben davison provides the kind of tutelage that you say you provide and then he beats your fighter is that what you wanted you wanted anthony to beat your fighter obviously not it's not that don charles isn't raising a valid point valid points because he is. It's just important to know what the intention behind all of that is. I would sooner call it jealousy than concern because Ben Davison has been highly revered for a long time now as one of the better coaches, better trainers in the United Kingdom. Don Charles doesn't get the same plaudits that Ben Davison gets. So that when Don goes on the attack and starts to lambast Ben Davison, what's going through his mind is, this guy's been getting all this praise when that praise should have been going to me. Because look at what my fighter just did to his fighter. That's what it is. Is he wrong though? He's right about some things, wrong about others. Ben Davison can't fight the fight for Anthony. He can't do that. You can have the most well-made plan, but you still need someone to properly execute it, and that would be Anthony. Ben can't fight the fight for him. No matter what they worked on. I've got mixed feelings. I'm ambivalent as to whether or not Ben Davison should be criticized for how Anthony performed when Anthony's the one in the ring, he's the one taking the punches, and he's the one making the mistakes. Big ones. Don Charles mentioned the virtues and drawbacks of film study, watching film on a fighter, looking for tells and tendencies, things that you can capitalize on 
in a fight. There is a virtue to that. There is. There is a benefit. But it is like Don said. Supposing they change that, whatever it is you picked up on, whatever mistakes, whatever holes, supposing in the very next fight those holes are patched up, well, then your film study is useless. Then what's the remedy? The solution? Yes. A solid base. Ah. A solid foundation. The mistakes that Anthony made that costed him this fight that saw him knocked down four times over the course of five rounds. They didn't need to happen, and they shouldn't have happened. And he, as an Olympian, a gold medalist, and a two-time unified heavyweight champion, should have known better. I'm a huge fan of Anthony Joshua, and I have been for some years now, but what costed him that fight was so jarring to me because it was so amateurish. Those rookie mistakes, pulling back in a straight line with both hands down, you're wide open for the looping right. And I can't put that on Ben. You're supposed to know that all on your own. By now, that's supposed to be muscle memory. Second nature, instinct. Daniel Dubois has declared that he would welcome a rematch versus Anthony Joshua next. I want to do even better next time. I know what I need to improve on. I just want to prove people wrong all the time. Next time, I believe I'll be more clinical. My honest opinion? The truth lies somewhere in the middle because a lot of what Daniel did, I expected him to do, but I expected much better from Anthony. That what lost Anthony this fight was so amateurish. Was it that Daniel was just so great, so great on the night, or that Anthony was so poor? so bad. Daniel didn't look like a different fighter to me. He looked like the same guy that I saw fight Jarrell Miller and the same guy that fought Philippe Hergovic with the same holes that can be exploited. No, the fighter that looked different to me, different and not in a good way, was Anthony. Did you not take this guy seriously that you thought you could fight him with your hands down? Do you think this was going to be easy? Do you take him lightly that you've abandoned your boxing mechanics, your fundamentals, because a lot of what happened didn't need to happen, and it wouldn't have. You see, I don't know that I can put this on Ben. Ben Davison or no Ben Davison, the fundamentals are what the fundamentals are, and if you have a solid base, you don't make those mistakes, and Daniel can't capitalize on them. A lot of what Daniel did, I expected him to do. Though I also expected that Anthony Joshua would have the frame of mind to keep his hands up. You're in there with a puncher. This guy's trying to knock you out. You should know better. Did he not learn from the Andy Ruiz fight when he rocked Andy Ruiz, went in for the kill, and was countered? You rock Daniel Dubois, you go in for the kill, and once again, you're countered. He wasn't with Ben Davison in the Andy Ruiz fight. No, he was still with Rob McCracken. Practically the same thing happened this past weekend. Different trainer, same mistake. You hurt the guy, you go into a frenzy, you abandon your fundamentals, and you paid for it. I don't know that we can blame Ben for that. I think we have to blame Anthony. It's not that he doesn't have elite level qualities or elite level tools so much as when is it that he decides to use them and when he doesn't. Because what happened on Saturday didn't need to happen, and it shouldn't have. Don is using this as an opportunity to make it Ben's fault to indirectly glorify himself, but it's not Ben's fault. It's Anthony's.